Good afternoon and welcome into Mary's outdoor kitchen today again. Uh, fortunately the sun's shining and I don't think there's any chance of shower so I don't think we're going to have to call the maintenance crew in to put the brawly up. So I just came on a minute early just to see, get a few people on here first. Hi Lori Jo, how are you? Happy Chenko de Mayo. Hi Deborah, how are you? Uh, <clears throat> I know how the, uh, hi Ellen, good to see you. Is it sunny where you are today? And hi Joanne. And Cindy, how's your hula hooping going? And Rusty, hi. Hey Ellen. Hi Jackie, how are you? Well, it's the Mexican holiday. Uh, I hope I'm saying it right, um, Chenco de Mayo, and uh, I've had the pleasure of enjoying this holiday while being in Florida several times on May the 5th. <clears throat> it's absolutely fantastic and it's a must to go to a Mexican restaurant and uh, my friends and I usually go to the VIP and have uh, several margaritas, tacos, uh, enchiladas, whatever. But it's a really, really good bit of fun, and I hope that you're all uh, happy. Cinco de Mayo. Thank you, Julie. And Lara, hi. And Kathy, how are you, Kathy? And Jackie, hi. How are you? Hi, Pam Jeffers. And Lori and Evie. Hi, Evie. I'm making uh, Evie today spicy mango salsa. So, and I know Evie will be enjoying... Uh, a little bit of Mexican celebration there in uh, Florida. At least uh, she'll be enjoying a taco or two. And uh, this salsa is really, really simple to make, full of fresh flavors. Um, I've got most of it prepped up here just to save a little bit of time. But the one thing I am going to show you is how to deal with a mango. Uh, cinco, that's right. You're right. Kimberly, you're absolutely right. It's Cinco de Mayo. And uh, <clears throat> yes, it's spelled correctly though, C-I-N-C-O. It's a great, fantastic holiday in the States and in Mexico. Uh, now, it's not the Mexican Independence Day. It is the Battle of Puebla. A uh, little bit of trivia there for you. Uh, when the Mexicans won against Napoleon III, yes, in 1862. So it marks a great victory on May the 5th. So that's a little bit of trivia for you. Hi, Kimberly. You love salsa? Good. Well, it was so funny. I bought my uh, cilantro, my coriander, as we call it here. And funny, I never noticed this before. This is how we buy it. We buy it in growing pots. I'll just show you. As long as the whole thing doesn't come out of the pot. No. We buy it in growing pots like this. So... If you wanted to plant it on, you could plant it on, but uh, I usually buy one and uh, I use the whole thing in a one. That's just, see it's got real dirt in there. Real dirt, <laughs> not pretend dirt. And it also says on here, great for stirring into salsa. I just noticed that a few minutes ago. I never noticed it before. But anyway, so that's kind of fun. They put that on the package just to let you know it's great for making salsa out. And let's see who's on. Kimberly, Rollins, hi. And Jenny and Julie, you're doing the cleanse for two days. Uh-oh, no Mexican food for you today. Hey, Cindy, Donna, Patricia. Hi, girls. How are you all? Sorry, I couldn't find Cindy and <laughs> Patricia in your contacts. <laughs> That's my Siri going off. Hello, be quiet, please. <laughs> what happened there. <laughs> when things start talking to you, you wonder whether you're going mad or... Anyway, I got a lovely surprise from Canada in the post today. It was so much fun and I know a lot of you will appreciate this. Emily, hi. And Petra, how are you doing? Petra, I know you're on your own there. You doing all right? Hi, Amy and Donna. I hope I hope that uh, if you're, you are home alone, that this brings a little bit of fun into your kitchen. You feel like I'm there in the kitchen with you. Having a, I was going to say a cup of tea, but that would be ridiculous. Let's have a margarita instead. It's Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> oh, great, Julie from California. I hope you're all going to go out and celebrate today. Well, I don't know what your lock-in, lock-in or lockdown. Hi, Fiona, how are you? 
Nice to get your text today. Thank you and thanks for the news. Hi, Kathy. Uh -huh. Kathy, how's your ceiling after it fell in on you <laughs> yesterday <laughs> or the day before? I trust Jason got it all fixed for you. Anyway, I got a really, really nice surprise. Ah, uh, the margarita sounds good, Petra says. My friend Ruth Hall, I don't know whether Ruth will come on, but I asked her if she would come on, but she's obviously been cleaning out or she sent me a wee note. I never expected this, but we hooked up a few years ago. Uh, we had a school reunion in 2010. It was absolutely lovely. And uh, so anyway, we keep in touch via Facebook and stuff. And she said, like so many others, I have had lots of time at home recently spending on purging and organizing my piles of stuff so I'm sure you can all relate to that right but then she sent me our Glendale uh, secondary school uh, graduation commencement and the reason I'm bringing this up is one of the reasons why I have such a love of cooking is because of one of the teachers in the teaching staff here and her name is Mary Lou Bruner right there and she was the one that taught me all my cooking over the years at high school, at secondary school, we call it. But that was so nice to receive today, and it was a real trip down memory lane. Brought a few tears to my eyes, anyways. It was a happy, uh, happy times to think about those days when you were back in high school. Hi, Carla. Hey, Jenny, how are you? Oh, Taco Tuesday from Fort Worth, Texas. Thank you. Oh yeah, blackberry or raspberry margarita, Patricia, get on it. Get that blender going, will ya? <laughs> I could do with it. I really, really wish I had the ingredients for a margarita right now. <laughs> I would love to have one while talking to you. Yes, Kathy, a lovely reminder to get. I just love it. I've got some news for you too, I want to tell you later. I'll send you a little message. But anyway, I wanted to show you something. First of all, this is our mango, okay? And uh, I, normally when I make salsa, I, I don't add, add mango, but a very good friend of mine said to me one day, uh, Jamie Button, who's in Hamilton, and my great friend Jeanette's daughter-in-law, said to me, hey Mary, why don't you add some mango to your salsa? Well, I've always had mango in my salsa when I've been in Florida, and I never thought being here to do it. I guess I don't see mangoes that often. But anyway, just to explain to you about a mango, okay? A mango has two cheeks. All right, here and here, and that's where most of your flesh is. All right, inside the middle of the mango is a long sort of uh, pit seed, you might even want to call it a seed, and it's a flat seed, but it's a very big seed. So a lot of people have difficulty uh, dealing with the mango, so I wanted to show you that first. Oh, I'm gonna take this little knife. There's two different ways of dealing with this. Um, and we're gonna we want to dice it up for our salsa so I'm just gonna take a little bit of the skin off with a potato peeler uh, just got to get my middle here yeah there we go so I'm gonna take a little bit of the skin off and show you how we're gonna cut the mango up for our salsa mangoes are quite kind of I think people sort of get worried when they're fresh mangoes because they don't know how to cut them. But it's very, very simple. And I'll just put that to side just now. If I show if I show you it's very simple. We're gonna just cut the bum off. Okay? There we go. And even that seed is so long, it's starting right there. So we can sort of sit the mango up a little bit like that. Now what I want to do is I want to cut some little kind of flat pieces off the mango. I want to get as many as I can because I want to dice this up. And then I'm going to show you how to do the other half a slightly different way. I don't know how much I'll get out of this. I seem to be getting quite a bit. That's good. And there you'll see I'm down to the pit there. Okay, so what I'm going to do with these little bits probably could have taken a little bit more skin off there, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. All right. 
and I am just going to I'll show you with one piece first I was piling them up there so let's just take one piece because this is for our salsa are right, you gonna make like kind of like little thin almost like you know those little thin french fries that you get all right and then we're gonna dice them up see and make them real small pieces like that so that's for our mango that's our, for our salsa I'm just gonna put that into the bowl to get it out of my way but just to show you so if you're making if you're wanting to add some mango to uh, your salsa you need to cut it you know really small you don't want to put it in in big huge chunks because you can't pick it up on the on the uh, nacho chip or the, yeah nachos and then just turn that I sharpened my knife up today Kathy you'll be happy to know it's a great big one which I use sometimes which I'll be using to do the coriander so put that in now, again, I just want to show you as pure demonstration, I'm probably going to put the other half of the mango in here, but I want to show you another way to cut mango up. Just so you know. I'm going to just cut this up into little pieces. There we go. So that mixes in. Oh, I didn't cut this one. Hang on. There we go. So that's our one half of the mango. The other way to do the mango, just to show you this, because you can use this for your smoothies. So if you only wanted to put half the mango in there, now what you've got to do is you've got to run your knife and find the pit. There we go. Now we are certainly not going to waste these sides. So you've got to get the top of your pit and you've got to work your knife down the seed the inner seed or the pith or whatever you want to call it as close to the pith as you can now there is some little bits on here too that I'm going to play around with later but that's for later not for now I'm just going to move that over there and those two bits over there and I just want to show you what I'm going to do with this one what we're going to do is we're going to do like a little grid all right don't take it right down to the skin about a centimeter and a half apart, uh, half an inch, and then we're going to do a little grid this way. I hope that this helps you out because this is a difficult one. And then you just turn it like a hedgehog, like that, and there you go. You can just eat those, you can take them right off there with your fingers. Mm. See? Oh, it's ever so delicious. So just take them off with your fingers or you can take them off with a knife, like so. Whatever's easier. And then I'm probably going to chop some of that up later and put it inside. But I just wanted to show you that, how to deal with the mango. Because some, it's not that easy and some people get a little sort of in awestruck by the mango. <laughs> so I'm just going to move this out of the way at the moment. And bring my bowl into place. So I got a little bit of mango. I got half the mango in here. I am going to cut the rest up, but I'm not going to waste time on here uh, cutting up a mango. So this is my tomatoes that I've cut up. Now I've used all cherry tomatoes in this rest in here because I had a big box of cherry tomatoes, and I also used two uh, larger tomatoes that were, you know, getting a bit soft. And that's the best way to use them up. Hi, Ruth. And Kathy, how are you? Oh, thank you, Kathy. I'm glad you, you think that I've done that the correct way. So this is probably, I know you can hear the seagulls singing here. Um, this is probably about two cups of chopped tomato there. I got that prepared earlier <laughs> because it takes time to get that ready. I'm just gonna mix that with the mango. I've also got, used two or three uh, tea, uh, cloves of garlic, and I chopped mine again, I chopped them earlier, because it just saves time, a little bit of time, and let that, mix that garlic into that, so we've got about two cups of tomato, it doesn't matter the measurement for the tomatoes, okay, 
It really, really doesn't. Uh, because it depends how many people you're having. Now, I know you call these scallions, I think, and we call them spring onions. But I just thought I'd show you, just so that you know what the difference is. Hi there, Patty. How are you? You love mango salsa. Yeah, I do. Linda, Eddie, how are you? Linda, look what Ruthie sent me. From Canada. Our Glendale, Glendale graduation. Linda's another school friend of mine. Just come on there. I don't want to get that wet. I don't want to get any sticky stuff on it. And Sheila Hogan, how are you, Sheila? Good to see you. It's nice to see you the other day on Zoom. And Temple and Tanya, how are you, Tanya? I keep trying to send you a message, Tanya, but I, I don't think you look at your messages. <laughs> hey, Jennifer, how's everything with you? You still working? Oh, Linda. Hi, wee Linda. <laughs> Fast Eddie. That's what we used to call Linda. We all had our nicknames. My friend Ruth, who sent me that, her name was Raisin. We used to throw raisins at her in the lunchroom. <laughs> Hi, Alka. I hope you're doing okay, Jennifer. Anyway, so we've got in here now about two cups. Yeah, I'd say about two cups. Now, these are our scallions, as you may call them, but we call them spring onions here. I've got three of them chopped up finely. I've done all this chopping by hand, but if you have a little mini chopper, by all means, use that. It's just, I, I like to get all the nice colors in here. I've got, because you know I like the heat, I've got one red and one green chili. Oh, that's fine, Tanya. I just wondered if you got your messages, because sometimes people have you on Messenger, but the messages don't click through uh, for one reason or another. I don't know why. Anyway. Don't worry about that. Uh, so one red and one green chili, all chopped up. So if you don't like it, okay, because you buy your salsa is usually mild, medium, and hot. And depending on what kind of chili you use, so if you like it really, really hot, use a really hot chili, like a scotch bonnet or something like that. <laughs> uh, so try that. And we've got... Uh, one red onion here chopped. I'm going to put that in next. Let's see if I want all of that red onion. Yes, I do. I just like to see the quantities first. This is going to be, I think I'm going to be eating salsa for the rest of the time. <laughs> now, I've got some lovely limes here. I don't know whether I'm going to use one or two, so I am going to taste it, but I am going to put the zest of the lime in here as well, just to give it a real limey taste. And I love Oh, the smell of limes is just beautiful. There's one thing about, if you go to a Mexican restaurant, it's how colorful it all is. All the reds, oranges, they love color. And hence, I guess they like the color of their salsa and everything, and their guacamole. Yeah, I'd like to make guacamole for you as well. That's a nice one. I can get some nice ripe avocados. So just get that lime rind in there as much as possible. There we go. That's my little um, Pampered Chef grater, which I couldn't live without. I just love it. i just cut this lime in half. The juice of the lime in there. I've got a little juicer here. You can see my little antique glass juicer. So, Linda, Eddie, how are you doing over there in Hamilton, Ontario? I hope the weather's getting better for you. And I uh, hope the isolation hasn't been too bad for you either. So nice to see some old friends on here that I've known for, oh, since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. So that's your line going in. I think you might be using two lines. I really love the flavor of lime and tomato, and cilantro, coriander, love those tastes. But, we'll just mix that in first, and we'll see what we're going to do. I'm just going to set that aside for a minute. Alright, I do have some chili flakes here. I think I'll put a few in. Yes, and I'm going to put a little bit of black pepper in here too. The color is really, really coming together. 
If you wanted, you could put some yellow pepper cut up very, very small. And you could put that in there too. I am going to add the rest of the mango into this afterwards. But I have here now what I need to do is I need to get my cilantro, coriander. And I'm going to use my big knife for this because I really want to chop this up. Now go chop up the little stalks as well. There's tons of flavor in there. Tons. Chop, chop those little ones up. I'll just show you first. The reason I like to use this big knife is because it has kind of a rocking action. Just be careful, okay? Like if you don't use knives very much in the kitchen, don't necessarily follow my lead on this. Um, do what you can do to cut it up. You can put it in a, a little um, a little chopper and chop it up in there, but don't chop it up too much that you make it out of, you make mush out of it. If you are chopping something on a board like this, hold the bottom of your knife and then bring the things back in to the center and then do it again. Okay, you want to do this fine, you can really, really smell the cilantro coming out. That's how I chopped everything up today, my tomatoes and everything by hand. So I just keep bringing it into the center and go over it again. There we go. So that's our, so if you ask me the quantity of that, I would say a good handful. That's about the best way to explain that. One thing I like about using a big knife like this too, is you can scoop things. It's much easier for scooping. It's kind of like a spoon. Okay, now we've got our green cilantro in here, and we're going to have to have a little taste of this because we might need a little bit more lime. I'll put a little bit of salt. I would like sea salt. If you have sea salt, please use sea salt. It's much, much better. Hi Lola and Lisa and Gina. Oh yes, you can use a fork and knife to chop the cilantro if you would like. I just prefer to use my big, big knife. Okay, so let's see here what we're doing. Let's get a little taste of this. Oh, that was perfect. But I am going to add some more lime. Mm. Oh, you just wouldn't believe how those flavors all come together. So I am going to add this one more lime. I'm not going to put the zest in though. Just to save a bit of time. And I am going to add the lime. And then what you're going to do after this is you're going to cover it. Don't be tempted. You're going to cover it and put it in the fridge for a little while to let the flavors all mar together. Now it couldn't be much easier than that. There's no cooking involved here. It's just as long as you have the ingredients, which I hope you do. There we go. And I am going to add a little bit of more mango to that when we're done. And so I've got the whole mango in here. So that's a beautiful, all we need is some um, tortilla chips, which I have, of course. Hi, Gina and Wendy. I'm gonna taste this on your behalf, okay? I wish you could join me and bring a margarita over. Mm, it's so good. <laughs> mm, that mango really makes it. That is so good. Well, for supper tonight, tacos, salsa. It's a Mexican night. Anyway, just to show you again, all the beautiful colors in there. And what I do is I get a little sort of rustic bowl like this to serve it. And get another little rustic bowl. Put your tacos in. And there you go. You've got a real nice party dish there that's beautiful and healthy and really fresh and fragrant and see how nice it looks in the in the uh, rustic dish there there you go how easy was that so Cinco, Cinco de Mayo happy Cinco de Mayo to you and I hope that you enjoyed that today and I hope you get a chance to make it 
I'm going to make um, mint, uh, ground beef, ground beef tacos with salsa and, and lettuce and all sorts of things on top, and sour cream and stuff. <laughs> all the naughty things. <laughs> You're getting a big spoon, Elka. Come and, come and help yourself. <laughs> Well, listen, girls, thank you, Susan. Same to you. Thanks for coming on. I hope you enjoyed that. A uh, very, very simple dish. I'm trying to um, get as many sort of dishes together for you every second or third day. Hey there, Stuart. You won't even know what Cinco de Mayo is, probably. <laughs> but it's a wonderful Mexican holiday. Hey, Peter, how are you? And Gina? Yeah, well, I think I'll be spending the rest. Hi, Ruth. Oh, that's okay. We'll see you soon. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you very much, Linda. You're practicing your Spanish on me. <laughs> thank you. I love it. I was supposed to be over there in Canada right now, visiting with my friends. We had a school reunion, but they had to cancel it. So I think it's in October. So Linda, you're not rid of me yet. You'll see me maybe then. Hi, Amy. Deborah, thanks very much. You girls all have a great day. Thanks for coming on. Happy Cinco de Mayo. And if you see someone without a smile, give them yours. And if you see someone without a margarita, give them yours. No, 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 don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Just keep it and drink it yourself. Nice to see you girls. Have fun. Bye.